For over four decades, the This Old House team has tackled projects big and small all over the country. Hey, Kevin, boy, we're glad to see you. You know, we get that a lot, actually. <laughs> On a special edition of This Old House, we'll take a detailed look at what has become a focal point of many home renovation projects. This thing is a time capsule, huh? The kitchen. We're going to try to push this wall out about six feet. Pretty dark, pretty outdated. From the initial design to the final reveal, We'll examine the problems many homeowners face as we follow the All transformation right. of this outdated, cramped galley kitchen. So pretty much everything you guys asked for in the kitchen, are you happy with it? We feel like it's a dream come true. Almost every renovation project tackled by the This Old House crew has one common element. Outdated kitchen with the cabinetry that's falling apart. We are really going to get the kitchen, make it a dream space for us. Really? Um, definitely new appliances. So we've heard this before, basically a brand new kitchen. Yeah. Everything goes, all new stuff. Mm -hmm. Pre-1950, most American kitchens were modest in size and relegated to the back of the house. They weren't meant for hosting guests or socializing. Over time, however, the lines between the dining room, living room, and the kitchen have been erased. Now, more than ever, the trend is toward open, well-lit, hard-working kitchens that include space to cook, socialize with family, and entertain friends. The kitchen, however, is usually the single most expensive room to remodel. Even a basic update of cabinets and appliances can cost much more than many homeowners expect. Moving walls and relocating windows and doors can really make the price skyrocket. Still, kitchens continue to be one of the most popular rooms to remodel and are the focus of many home renovations. Nick and Emily, the homeowners of this 1909 arts and crafts style house in Arlington, Massachusetts, knew the layout of their kitchen had to be improved to better fit their family. We've seen this before, right? The little tiny kitchen, the old appliances. Kevin, this dishwasher has not worked since last summer. Huh. When we moved in, the cabinets were painted dark brown. The space was really starting to feel narrow. All right, so we know the plan in here, right? We've got to update the appliances, we need new cabinets, but mostly you just need more space, right? Yes, yeah, so let's go this way. Oh, all right, so this is a pretty good sized room in here. How are you using this right now? This is working really well as my daughter's playroom. Yeah. But if you look behind you, you see these cabinets? Mm -hmm. It's the original kitchen. Oh yeah. So okay. our plan is to make this back into a kitchen. Yeah. Over here where you see the mudroom, that will be a breakfast nook. All right, so that sounds like a great plan. And what becomes of the old kitchen? Not that there's much of it, but... Well, we do think it was the original pantry. Mm -hmm. So our plan is to make it back into a pantry uh. and then add just a little bit of space to make a first floor powder room and that first floor laundry. Great, all right, so it sounds like you're gonna solve all the problems with this first floor. A lot of work, but a, a pretty good plan. Yes, I think so. How do you transform a kitchen from this to this? Many homeowners start off by working with a kitchen designer. An experienced designer can save homeowners time and money by helping with layout and design choices and pointing out potential issues before they become real problems. My concern is this little window over here. Do you see how tightly it hits that cabinet? Yeah, it looks like it's right up against it. So my thought is to move that over. That looks much better. Yeah. Doesn't it? <laughs> they can help maximize storage make smart substitutions for high-end materials, and even contact the best local contractors for the job. That is absolutely everything that we asked for. I'd love to hear that. This initial design stage is perhaps the most critical part of a kitchen remodel. Nice big range with some overhead storage. Beautiful. Here, changes can be made quickly and cheaply before a hammer is even picked up. Some homeowners find it helpful to fully mock up the proposed kitchen layout with paper and cardboard. Yeah, it really helps to see the massing of the cabinets, to imagine how the space will flow and function. Sure. Using this low-tech approach, homeowners can really see how different elements of the kitchen would interact in their space. But once we saw the depth of this with the message center, I really became concerned that it just didn't fit. This is Bath, Maine, a beautiful little New England city on the Kennebec River. It's home to the Bath Ironworks, a shipyard famous for building everything from tugboats to battleships. It's also home to a well-known cabinet shop. Our homeowners, Nick and Emily, took a tour of the shop a few weeks ago to see if the cabinets meet their standards. 
And I think they did, because today they came back to Bath to see some designs for the new kitchen and pick some materials. We are going to tag along. We are. We finally come to this point where we're picking right, up. Right, the whole gang is here. Nick, Emily, even Serafina, good to see you guys. Hi, Kevin. Yeah. This is Heather. She's been helping us out with the kitchen design. Oh, nice to meet you. We're good psyched to, to be you. up here in Maine and to be working with you guys. We're very glad to have you up. Thanks for making the trip. Great. So where are we in the process? You'll remember the old dining room yeah. and the old kitchen. And now we have a brand new kitchen that we've completely expanded on. Sure. So this is the back of the house here. All right. Yes. And so this is obviously the layout for the new stuff. Can you walk me through this? Yes, absolutely. So we have a couple of entrances uh, into this space. Mm -hmm. This um, becomes the center island that is all about the grounding of this kitchen. And then we go over to uh, the cooking area. This whole wall is all about baking and cooking. Are you guys bakers? Is that actually going to happen in this kitchen? It actually happens. We love to make bread. Good. Yeah. All right. Yep. And then we come over to the refrigeration area and uh, we have a nice hutch that uh, is auxiliary to the refrigeration. And then we're headed over to uh, the uh, built-in nook. Built-in bench you're saying here? Yes. So how do you guys feel about that? Some people love them, some people say they never use them. You guys are built-ins? We absolutely wanted that moving into the project. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so the old kitchen used to be this small little space here. What's in it now? Yes, that small space has turned into the pantry oh, cool. and a butler's pantry. Great. Yes. So, and a uh, lot of storage in here. And then we come around to the soapstone sink. Um, and then this area is pretty special. This is going to uh, function for both sides. Uh, so we have pass-through uh, with bypass doors, um, and above we have uh, glass wall cabinets that are double entry on both sides. It's going to be fantastic. How do you guys feel about that connection to the dining room? It's fantastic. Really love it. I mean, it's, it lets us get things through very easily. And, you know, it's a formal space. So we'll be entertaining in there. Yeah. And that really, it serves a great purpose, and it looks fantastic. Yeah. So are we comfortable with the layout and, and everything Heather's done here? Love it. With the layout complete, the demolition and construction phases can begin. Often, cabinets, countertops, and appliances can be donated to local nonprofits who can refurbish them for resale. If your new kitchen requires a gut job, be sure to test for lead, possibly asbestos, before you start and take all of the proper precautions. are well into the demolition and the lead abatement up on the third floor and down here on the first floor the lead abatement is done and we still have some demolition to do. Now you may remember that this is where the old kitchen used to be and you can see that we've taken out the cabinets, the counters and the appliances and what was here is going to move into this space right here. This used to be a kids playroom it has been taken back down to the studs and will eventually be our new kitchen. And then it's going to connect to a family room, Tommy. We've got a, a bump out going in, right? Yeah, we have an addition that's going to go here. All right, so you want to attack these walls first? Yeah, what I want to do is try to cut these walls in sections and push them down and then see if we can get them in the dumpster. All right. All right. You see how this addition is going to open this place up. Oh, it's going to open it right up really nice. Focus can now shift to picking the design elements that can bring a kitchen to life. The almost unlimited amount of finishes that are available can sometimes feel overwhelming. A green island. Turned legs. Crackle glaze. We have a great induction cooktop unit that when you shut it off, it gets instantly cool so you can't burn yourself. Sure. No more Lazy Susan. This is the magic corner. Check this out. White on white on white, but keeps it light and bright. An experienced designer can help narrow the choices to suit the homeowner's individual tastes. We're going to start with the uh, door samples. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at profiles. This is our classic shaker profile. Uh, this is actually hand painted, but uh, it has this simple uh, thumbnail curve to it, inset door. It's beautiful. It spans all the time. Simple and timeless, right? Exactly. I mean, this thing still works today. Yeah. And then this one here. This is from an old ship captain's house that's being restored. Uh, this profile is specific to this ship captain's house and it has a small shoulder uh, profile with a very gentle OG. And a replication of something in this one person's house. So that's really yeah. unique. Yes, yes. Beautiful. And we have the cutter. Okay. Yep. And then the third option? Yes, this third option actually, uh, I took details from your house and I found that uh, this was one of them. And this is a stop chamfer detail. Mm. Um, it has a nice angle to it, uh, very geometric, pretty. 
It's like you guys are your own ship captains. They're replicating your doors now, too. <laughs> yep, yep. So what do you guys think? I mean, when you see the three of them, are you leaning towards one or the other? Does something pop? Well, this clearly pops. It Im immediately catches my eye, but I would never say it was from our house. <laughs> so it's really a testament to how there is discerning eye. Yep, I'm looking very hard. How about you, Nick? Do you have thoughts on it? I would probably lean more towards this middle option, which is a little bit slightly more decorative mm. uh, shaker version. I very much like this that, that Heather created. My only worry here is it maybe leans a little modern and has some sharper edges, which over time may wear down. That's fair, and you've got an opinion, which is great, so we can work with that. We wanted to pick up uh, the warm tones with the wood of the island, and we're looking at several uh, species here. Um, we have a rift sawn oak cut. Wow. It's which beautiful. is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's a very straight grain cut. Um, and then we're looking at uh, uh, quarter sawn oak, which is a little bit of a different cut. Both of them are really uh, stable woods. Um, and then we have a different kind of a approach here. And we're looking at um, wood samples from uh, a special project. This was harvested from the Sweet Land Inn and Tavern in Hope, Maine. And we just acquired this, and uh, it came out beautiful in the mm. staining process. So. So what is this species? Is this, this is eastern white pine. Eastern white pine. Right out of Maine. All reclaimed, and I'm just seeing a different uh, finish on these. Yep, yep. Wow, so what do you guys think of that? I mean, you know, it comes complete with the beautiful colors, but also the nail holes. Are you ready for that around your beautiful island? We love the patina, and in fact, we love the idea of ever, anything that's eco-conscious, reclaimed, mm. nice, honest material that's in the spirit of arts and crafts, especially if we're going to paint some of the perimeter cabinet. Nice. The countertop is another area where consumers have a wide variety of choices. Some opt for the consistency and low maintenance of man-made materials like laminate, solid surface, and quartz, while others prefer the natural beauty of soapstone, granite, or marble. Nick and Emily selected a Danby marble mined in southern Vermont. This is the largest underground quarry in the world and is about one mile below surface level. Look at this. 25, 30 years of marble going Plenty south. Plenty there. And then there's a whole bunch of marble here going north. You're not going to run out of marble. Never going to run out of brook layers. Here, massive diamond studded saws harvest the marble in 150 ton blocks. The blocks are then moved to the processing station where they are trimmed down to a more workable size. This is one of the two uh, diamond blade uh, gang saw. Okay, so multiple blades at the top. Look at that. So this is no finish at all? No, right? this is a sewn finish. Sewn finish, me, it's just been cut. Cut from the blades okay. only. We have a 17 different wheels. Uh, grinding wheels? Grinding wheels. Okay. Uh, and we can do three finishes. Polish, honing, and brush. So that's a home finish, not really bright. That's a home. And that's what everybody likes. And that's what actually our homeowner has ordered too, in that color. Is that, do you think that could be ours? I think so, yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Natural materials like marble is often sought after because each piece is unique. Another unique element Nick and Emily chose for their kitchen was a custom-made, one-of-a-kind range hood. We'll be applying a second band here of brass. Mm -hmm. The bottom. So that's the front piece of trim there? It is. And then we have a curved piece. Right. Which will go here and over these seams. Well, okay. Four of those and, and secured with rivets? Secured with brass rivets, yes. Yeah. All right, it looks terrific. So when do we see this next? Well, As the design elements came together, progress continued at Nick and Emily's. <laughs> rough electrical in place and the plaster up, it was finally time for the custom cabinets to be installed. So we do not have down the finished floor yet, just the subfloor. Can you install your cabinets on the sub? I can, yes, because we know what the thickness of the floor is and I've ripped the sleepers that oh, yeah. are the same thickness as the floor. Okay. Um, so we'll set the cabinetry on that and the flooring installer can butt right up against the cabinetry. Beautiful. Where do you want to start? Uh, we're going to start in that corner and work this way. We have the refrigerator enclosure. We'll just get out of there. All right, I'm up on your sleeper. Nice done. So what we'll do is we'll just check that for level. All right. And we see the top's got to go back a little. All right, so I'm just going to shim it up. All right, 
I'll double check that. Nice. Looks like we got it. Next, we'll be putting this up. You can just steady it for me. I'm going to bring it up to those lines you'll see on the wall. That is the sign of a guy who puts cabinets up by himself. Yeah. Right? That's right. He never complains and it never gets tired. A little high. Come on, to back down. Touch more. Touch more. Touch more. Right there on my side's good. All right. If you could just steady this. Push it tight to the wall. Yeah, great. I'll check this for level. And it's sitting pretty good. If you wouldn't mind just screwing those two screws in for me. So you've obviously left a little gap here. This is to slide the countertop in. We have. So once they can slide it right in without any trouble, we'll settle that down. Once all the cabinets were installed, the countertop fabricator could make a template for the kitchen island. Because each piece of marble is unique, Emily went to the factory where the slab is cut in order to pick the perfect orientation used for the island. Well, I like the sparkles here, really pretty, catch my attention. But I also like the, the consistency down on this stretch. Mm. Well, I think because of the way this is laid out, you're going to get one or the other, right, Roberto? Correct. Right? And remember, we have to stay away from few marks. Let me point it out this part right here that we want to stay away from this. So anything that we do with the template, we want to stay away from this mark. So there's another one. And right it's a no. Oh, just a little you, white Kevin. spot, right? Excellent. So let's throw the template back up on there, and we can play with let's a couple uh, different configurations, Emily. I mean, this is the time to look at it, right? That's right. So down here, so as you said, Emily, this is a little less movement. Mm -hmm. I do like the idea that these two spots would get cut out from the island, mm -hmm. and then it just has a nice, consistent feel. And if we were to grab some of that color and movement, um, Roberto, is this Let's try. Let's see allowed if we can right avoid here? Them. So now people will be standing here. This is what they'd be seeing first. You'd be back here. And how do we, can we get that one out? Oh, uh, we can send in. Let me take a look again. Like, remember, you're going to have this on your island. I'm going to try to fix it so it's going to go away. How do you feel about seeing this, Emily? I like this a lot. This is a little bit concerning to me. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the final look of it, the other way just might, it Maybe. seems a little bit more of a safe bet. Let's flip it around. Let's make sure we don't have those imperfections. Imagine yourself standing at that island right there. Mm -hmm. Let me put the tape that we just make sure we're going to stay away from this part. Mm -hmm. I like this. Excellent. Okay, Kevin, now we're going to cut this island. This is the table saw. What we do, we put the template right on top, and we put some weight on it. They have a laser. The laser is going to follow every single point, and you're going to do the cutting with the diamond. So you don't mark it. It's actually going to use this as a guide. Exactly. Fingers. fingers. Go at an angle. Go at an angle. Yep. Uh, now watch the sink. Watch your fingers. Yep. Yeah. All right. Don't let it touch that Go sink. Go on the front, Louis. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't let it go down. Don't let it go down. Watch the. Watch hey, your it fingers. fits. We're gonna cut this, but first we need to do the uh, check for dimensions. Can you tell me how much you have there? Uh, I have an inch here. Okay, so we need to go one more eighth in my direction. A little bit. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to drill the closer hole, silicone down the sink, and glue down the island. All right, great. Now we're going to lift it to glue the island down. Here you go. We're going to pull 100% silicone. We're going to cook underneath the sink to seal the sink and underneath the cabinets. Okay. Watch the fingers. All right, one more piece to add, our faucet, a piece of jewelry for Look this kitchen. Look at that right there. Roberto, this thing looks Look fantastic. Emily is going to love it. <laughs> this 
This is remarkable. Do you guys even remember what the space looked like? <laughs> we do a little bit, Kevin. This, this wall here used to be uh, walled off. And we used to have a mud room over here, which we transformed into a breakfast nook. Calling that old room a mud room is being very generous. <laughs> over here, we've got some extra seating. Nice. And then this is the heart hutch. Nice. Beautiful leaded glass. And we wanted to bring in that heart detail from the exterior sure. inside came out beautiful. And you've got a detail in the millwork. Nick, I mean, this little diamond shape in the corner, uh, that chamfer, you were a little reluctant about that when we looked at it in the showroom. How do you feel about it now? I was, yeah, I wasn't sold on it at the time, but we trusted it and it came out beautiful. Terrific. Okay. Now for the refrigeration, you guys do not want to see stainless steel, so we've got the panelized doors. We've got them hidden behind these beautiful panels. Refrigerator on this side. Mm-hmm. And then the freezer all the way on the right side. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Over here, we've got the Danby marble. You love it? It's so beautiful and classic. Yeah, and if you guys love it, we love it. That is a classic look. It is. And then over here, we always wanted to do this natural oak grounding force island, mm -hmm. contrasting with some white painted cabinetry. Right. So while we're at it, we said, well, hide the dishwasher behind right. the beautiful oak. No stainless, another panel, right? That's right. Over here, we've got a wide apron sink. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fantastic for large dinners. Good. And then over here, we've got that custom metal hood that we were dreaming about. So to see it up like this, it's got the German nickel with the copper detailing, and it's just stunning. Made by our friends, the Tin Men and Nick. A, a bold statement in your kitchen. You, you okay with that? Absolutely love it. Adds a lot of character to the white backdrop. It's a heavy-duty piece. It's fantastic. Good. While we're cooking, over here, we've got a spice rack. So it's really handy just where we need it. Yep. And then over here, we've got handy refrigerator drawers. It will be perfect for Serafina to grab some snacks. No stainless, again, hidden behind the wood. Right behind the oak. And then here is the pastry counter that we wanted for her. So she'll be able to do some baking with me and then also be able to help at dinner time. And pastry, so you've got the counter down a little bit. You've got the stone countertop. That should help. Yes, and over here, we have a steam oven that completely replaces the need for a microwave. Mm. So pretty much everything you guys asked for in the kitchen, are you happy with it? Absolutely. Good. And how about you, Nick? You happy? Checks all the boxes. Love it. This outdated, cramped galley kitchen was transformed after months of hard work by a skilled team. All about the grounding of this kitchen. Clear? It is. Put your fingers. Put your fingers. The end result is an open, bright, and inviting space. Perfect for cooking with family and entertaining friends. Next time on This Old House, what have you brought us here? Holy oh, mackerel. A gem, huh? Diamond in the rough with emphasis on rough. So 1887, nice. Queen Anne, Victorian. Right. Very small cottage, but the appointments up there is amazing, the detail. Ooh. It gets better. Dicey over here. Yeah. This is a uh, northeast corner of the house, got a little bit more weather. Yep. 